The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfume and made, the, made from genuine aromatic, aromatic nor, nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who would betray him, said, why was this oil not sold for 300 days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and held a money bag and used to steal contributions. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priest plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and, not, and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. One day I received a text message from someone, a young person of our parish. They were driving in a car. She was driving in a car with her friends, and um, someone sneezed, and the response came, God bless you. And so a discussion arose among them in the car for which I got a text to clarify Father Mo, if we say God bless you to someone who sneezes, what happens if God sneezes? Can we say God bless you to him? Hence the question, can you bless God? And the answer is yes. The scriptures, especially the Psalms, are full of this. Bless the Lord. Let us bless the Lord. And how is it that this happens? We bless the Lord with our acts of loving devotion. Show him signs of our love. In this gospel passage, Mary becomes a vision of what it is to give care and devotion. The church fathers taught that Mary, in anointing Jesus with the oil, was preparing him for burial, a loving kindness, literally attending to someone's death. If you've never attended at someone's death, not that I wish it on anybody, anyone, but to be in attendance at someone's death is an extremely moving experience. In a weakened, weakened and vulnerable state, they elicit from you a great amount of care and tenderness. You can't help but desire to minister mercy. <clears throat> and so, this is what Mary is doing in recognition of where Jesus is going, that the biggest thing he can have as a blessing at this point is for her to care for him and show him kindness and mercy because of what he's about to do for the world. The church is acting in that person during this Holy Week. 
where we take this role of Mary and bless Jesus with our acts of devotion. Earlier uh, this morning, um, Ryan was speaking at our Behold the Man session, Ryan Amazine, uh, who's our seminarian here. And he was, he was speaking about how L- Holy Week is Lent on steroids. And this is the time to step up our devotion to Jesus. Instead of seeing these obligations that we hung upon ourselves to do, consider them acts of love and tenderness. Judas questioned Mary's act as something frivolous and a waste. She was pouring out her heart to Jesus. And what we do to pour out our heart to him is not wasted, but it blesses him. And so in a sense, the church participates in bringing consolation to the sorrowing heart of Jesus, who is not going under the, going, undergoing the passion again. He did that. But we participate mystically in consoling his heart during the passion where he paid for our sins. On the other hand, you have this juxtaposed with Judas, who only saw practicalities because what he was looking for was the blessings of the world today. The blessing of the world today is prosperity and personal comfort, even at the cost of others. Mary, it says she pours out something like 300 days wages It was probably a sacrifice of all the money she had. Jesus pours out all of his precious blood to bless us. And strangely enough, what blesses him the most is when we generously give him our sins. He's happy to receive them, to take them away from us. They're a gift given to him that he, that enables him to free us from our burdens. And so in generosity and profound loving devotion, we proceed during this sacred Holy Week. Thank you.